Okay. So what did you learn most from that trip? <sighs> Let's see. What did I learn most? I got one just off the top two. Okay. I don't want to take up too much time. I got two for sure. Yeah. Take your time. One is, so there's the story. Have you heard the story of Dick Rowland? No, so I, there's, I got all right here. I'll, I'll, I'm gonna take my time with this one. I think okay. this, this is a real important one. The story originally that I was told on, you know, why the, the riot or the massacre even happened was that there was this young black man, Dick Rowland, who had attacked or tripped and fell into an elevator and ran into a young white woman by the name of Sarah Page, right? That's the story that I think a lot of historians knew growing up. Like, oh, Dick Rowland was trying to get into this elevator. Sarah Page was an elevator operator. He tripped and fell and on accident, he hit her. And then boom, people thought that he attacked her. And that's where the massacre happened, mm -hmm. right? That's where for a solid two years, even after the board game, that's the story that, that I read, that story that I was taught, and that story that I kept telling folks. Going out there, we learned that Dick Rowland, or they, they called him Diamond Dick, right? He, he was a he was a little bit, he was in the streets a little bit, a little bit of a player, signed some shoes, he was shiny. He was a, so they called him Diamond Dick Rowland. And he was actually in a relationship with Sarah Page. Mm -hmm. They were together, and Sarah Page had just told him that she was having his child. All right. So the whole context of the entire massacre for me changes 100%. As soon as you know that these two are in love, they're having each other's babies. Now it's saying that the massacre almost came from a, a place of, I mean, we knew it came from a place of hate, but the fact that I think these, these two were in love and were having each other's child is a different type of hate, right? So I think that's one of the things that I definitely learned coming from there is the, the source and the, the, the true spark of the massacre and of the riot was from interracial relationships, interracial love. Mm -hmm. Number two, and this is a, a kind of a two-parter number two, but part one is Greenwood was huge. And I think <laughs> it's hard to really fathom, right? Like when you're, when you're reading the books and it's saying like, oh, it was 46 acres long or 46 uh, blocks long. Like you're thinking, oh, dang, that's, that's pretty big. But then when you go there and you see what Greenwood is today, it's about you know two, two blocks today, but then you take this tour and uh, Terry Backus from the Greenwood uh, Chamber of Commerce has a dope tour that you can book when you go out there. And he will walk you the whole trail of where Greenwood used to be, a mile long block or a mile long street. And when you're looking around right now, it's the, the University of Oklahoma and you're looking around, all of that used to be Black Wall Street. So I think also like, obviously, you know, learning about Black Wall Street, I knew it was big, I knew it was successful, but when you actually, you're walking and you're just like, dang, a hundred years ago, if I was just walking this mile long, it would have been all black owned businesses, over 600 black owned businesses, just schools, just black excellence and families all within this block so i think that's something that was amazing to also just experience and to be able to envision last thing my bad latroy <laughs> my bad it was a, it was a dope trip like there's nah, probably more this is about information I want, I want you to feed us feed the listeners so one one more thing is in the history books i don't think we it's not emphasized that after the riot or after the massacre and Black Wall Street was destroyed, we were able to rebuild, right? So by the time it was like the, the mid 1930s, early 1940s, Black Wall Street was back on and popping almost. But what was the, the true dagger was the policies of urban renewal, right? And urban renewal, another word for gentrification basically that I think across the nation, we all see gentrification happening in our neighborhoods all across, right? That right. same thing is what really ended Black Wall Street in its full potential because they put a freeway, cut it directly in the middle of Greenwood, right? By uh, imminent domain, they took away land or they said, you know, sell us this land or, or don't sell this land, but either way, we're gonna take the land for the betterment of the community 
same thing they did in Central Park with Seneca, Seneca Village, right? Like, we're going to take your land and then we're going to put a university here, which mm-hmm. sounds good, right? Because education is, is, is needed. We need a university. But, but the fact that they took our ancestors' land, they just took their land and said, we're going to you know, t- take all this down, all your businesses, all your homes, and we're going to put a university here instead. There's a lot of wealth that was lost with that decision. Um, and to this day, it's hard to, to rebuild and almost impossible to reclaim that land because it now belongs to a, a functioning and operating university. So I just think there, there's so many layers to learn from the history of Tulsa Black Wall Street, both the, the layers on how it was originally able to build, right? The community, the collaboration, the fact that we're going to build this together, that part, how it was systematically destroyed physically, and then also how it was systematically destroyed through policies later on. And I think if, as we look toward the future of building new black Wall Streets across the nation, we need to keep the, these, these systematic weapons into consideration as we're building so that we can protect ourselves kind of uh, beforehand.